Good evening. I primarily came down to uh, to say thank you to Slick and Lally. This was last night. And, uh, thank, thank you. I appreciate that. And who are you today? Thank you. I am the same man I am always. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and who is that? I am Citizen Jones. Oh, okay, Citizen Jones. Okay, thank you. I can be found <laughs> at Citizen Jones at USA DBA dot com. I got that. Thank you. Of Dustin Avenue. 16 Dustin Avenue. And he makes lots of sawdust. <laughs> Mike's making a reference to me sanding my floors. And, you know, if anyone's done that before, you know what I'm talking about, or what he's talking about. The second reason I came down was a Patrick uh, Cronin article, which I read uh, March 9, uh, concerning the seashell complex concessions, the legality question, as it, as it was entitled. And I was a bit concerned about uh, some points in this, because there seemed to be some things that were at odds with, uh, with my understanding of it. Uh, one, one point that I, that I would like to get clarified, Mr. Chairman, is that in one sentence he actually says that uh, um, Nickel said to Selectman, do not plan to make the deed. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, Nichols said the selectmen do not plan to make the deed. I'm sure there's a word off or a yes. word missing there. Could you fill that out a little bit? What the selectmen do not intend to do at this point is to litigate the issue mm -hmm. of, of the word concession. What we are trying to do and are doing is working with state parks mm -hmm. um, on the issue of whether or not they're competing with beach businesses. What the um, Director of State Parks has indicated that it's that, their, it, that is not their intention um, to compete, um, and, and if that becomes an issue, I guess we'll address it at that point. One of the reasons that we had suggested the HBAC as the forum, at least initially, um, for resolving problems is there are representatives, two representatives appointed by the selectmen, one of which is a selectman, two representatives pointed by the precinct, a representative of state parks, and so on. You have all the people there to try and solve a problem um, proactively, as opposed to some people seem to feel that we, that we should be in court at this point. Um, I don't feel that's the case. I intend to attend the March 31st um, session down there, where I think everybody has suggested that anybody that has concerns businesses <laughs> show up. Um, so we're, our approach is one of working with them. And I believe, I feel pretty good about the fact that, that we did not have to push um, very hard um, on the director to get him to put his intentions in writing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that that's uh, important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your responsiveness uh, to my request on Friday for a copy of the letter yep. from Philip Rice. Uh, it was very informative. Uh, I assume that this was a response to the board's request for an expression of intent yep. on exactly. their part. And, um, your interpretation, as you just expressed, that they don't plan on competing right. is, is not an interpretation I share. I, I see the, the opposite, actually, statement. It actually says here, our intention is not to compete directly with the businesses, which leaves the implication that they intend to compete indirectly. So there is competition, at least indirectly. In the very next sentence, he says, there will be some overlap, another word for competition, because we are a self-funded agency and need resources of revenue. Well, what business doesn't? I mean, this is clearly government in business, competing against private business. There's no way around that, as far as I can see. So I don't share your interpretation that they don't intend to compete. He's clearly stating here, his intention is, flat out, to compete with the private sector. Well, I guess we can agree to disagree, but what's important is what plays out going forward. Well, well it's already playing out. We've already got a store there that's open for business. Right. You've got to realize, Tim, that there's other positions on this board besides Mr. Nichols. Okay. Would you like to share that position? Yes. I think that we ought to be very careful with the word concessions, and I have no problem pressing that to the limit. And I don't know if the other board members agree or not, but that's my position. We, the deed very clearly state, <coughs> legally, as you de define that for me from somebody's black book legal definition, what it means. And I have no problem with that. That's been my position all along, that in the beginning, they agreed to do this, and they agreed not to do that, and they're overstepping their bounds. That's my position. Okay, what else you got, Tim? 
what Mike was referring to is the black law dictionary, mm -hmm. which I would suggest when we have legal questions of what a term means, this is like one of the first places you want to go. That they do have it on, on the web, but I noticed that my old dog-eared paperback edition uh, was more informative than the online uh, version. Uh, the online version only gave me one definition for concession, whereas <coughs> this gave me four, uh, which didn't seem to comport with uh, the description <coughs> in the article published by Pat Cronin. Concession is a government grant for specific privileges, period. Two, the voluntary yielding to a demand for the sake of the settlement. Three, a rebate or an abatement. The fourth one specifically says that it relates to international law, which probably isn't worth discussing at the moment, but the point is, is that <laughs> there's no need to discuss hot dog stands or any of this stuff. That's the legal definition under Black's 2000 revised edition, seventh edition. The first definition, the government grant for specific privileges, is the one definition you'll find on Black Law's website. So that's, that's the kind of uh, definition that I would work with in terms of what does a concession mean. Wouldn't go to uh, Webster's Dictionary for a definition for uh, legal terms. As far as going to HBAC is concerned, I, I did have uh, uh, on initial reading uh, some problem with that. Um, but in, in reflection, I understand the logistics that you were I think putting forth that it makes sense. We have everyone in the room. Right. If you have an issue, you know, work it out. Somebody shows up at the selectmen's meeting. We're not even sure if there's a problem. There's nobody from State Park mm -hmm. here to give their opinion. I, I think that that's a, 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 a good place to start. The problem that I have with that as a citizen is that I cannot hold these people accountable. There's no one that sits on that board that's elected to that board. Everyone on this board is elected to this board. However, there are... Hold you accountable at the polls for that. Whatever you do or don't do, I however, cannot with HBAC. There are two individuals on that board who are appointed by the selectmen, mm -hmm. one of which is a selectman. Yes, but he is appointed to that board. He's not elected to that board. So holding him accountable specifically for his actions or inactions on that board can't be done at the polls. And that, that's, that's not, uh, it's not a showstopper. It's not a reason not to go to HBAC. All right, I would encourage people to go to HBAC if they, if they have issues to work out and try to work them out. I'm just pointing out that one negative to using that route only is that a citizen cannot be expected to hold these appointees accountable at the polls, like we can you gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else you got, Tim? As I mentioned earlier, there is a store presently open. It is presently competing with our current businesses. And that's simply a fact. And I don't. I am not here to advance the concept of litigating. I don't think litigating is the correct approach. Uh, I think that litigation should be on the table uh, as a uh, as a negotiation stance, because they are in fact violating that deed. Right. But I mean, these things. You know, you have to keep in mind that less than two percent of all lawsuits filed in the United States actually find their way into a trial court. Mm -hmm. They're negotiated by settlement. And it's always best before you even begin to file a lawsuit to try to negotiate something first. Right, which is exactly what that meeting was that Wednesday and is exactly why the request for the letter and is exactly why we have requested the people that have issues where they believe the state is competing with them, mm -hmm. okay, and just for what it's worth, I've had no calls from anybody indicating that concern, okay? And when those calls that, hey, the state is competing with me, on the following basis, whatever, I think that's the point um, where we need to respond. I don't think we need to go picking a fight um, before this problem. Well, I'm putting this in a larger context where we're trying to uh, negotiate uh, new <coughs> terms with the state on a variety of issues, not just this one. And I, I'm trying to advance the idea tonight that we should probably have uh, one negotiation team to deal with all of these issues. And we shouldn't have uh, the state represented by uh, two, three, or four different department heads. I understand. But they should be represented by one person who has the authority to represent all of the uh, relevant entities within the state. After all, the state is a single entity, just as the town of Hampton is a single entity. And it should have a single negotiator. And those two people, 
should work out uh, all of the the uh, the uh, uh, workflow interfaces, if you will, between what the town does and what the state's doing. But we should do that, you know, with agreed upon preliminaries in terms of the framework of what the truth is that we're dealing with, such as things like, you know, the village district, uh, you know, underwrites virtually all the promotion at the state park. I mean, almost 90 percent of the yeah, village I, I district understand. budget. And by the way, this is public comment. We kind of have some level of a loosely enforced time limit. Okay. So. If you want to finish up, that's fine, but I'm just indicating we can't go on. Well, actually, I was finishing up. I don't okay, want to good. exceed my time. Good. No, um, I, I understand your point, and I think your point... Um, as far as viewing the state as one entity mm -hmm. and whatever, I think there's merit in that. I don't necessarily agree that it's as simple as going to a um, law di dictionary to get a definition of a word such as concession. And I did visit that in quite a level of detail. The first thing you're concerned with is the definition of the word. Mm -hmm. When the definition of the word is not clear in that context, you look at the context of the sentence and the paragraph and the document that it's used in, and then if it's still not clear, what was meant, then you look at some of the other supporting documentation which may exist going back um, to the time that the deed in the chapter 159 was actually made. Having looked at all those things, my personal opinion is it's not black and white clear the way some people believe it is and, and that at this point the, the court is not the place to solve it and we work with them and I think we do have a responsibility to make sure that the beach businesses aren't hurt by this. I agree. And okay. I, think, I think if we go to court, we are, we are, you know, if we go right to court without an attempt at negotiation, right. we are putting ourselves right. at serious and, disadvantage and in court. And that's what we start. And we don't want to do that. And that's what we start. Um, okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, you indicated you were done. No, I said I was finishing up. Okay. Go ahead and finish up. Um, so the, the agreed upon preliminaries I was speaking to were basically just four relatively simple points. There may be more. You, know, you may want to wordsmith them a bit. But the state needs to recognize that we do a lot locally to support that state park. Absolutely. All right. And I don't think they're recognizing that. And I think we need to put up some bullet points to, to, to force them. We're not going to the table in, in, unless these things are accepted as simple truths. The village underwrites virtually all the promotion of the state park. The town pays extra tax for state school re tax redistribution. The town generates a disproportionate share of room and meals tax. The town infrastructure is, in fact, overburdened as a result of the numerous uh, state park visitors. So we do a lot locally, both the town and the village district, in supporting that state park. And it seems to me that with their desire to uh, have us fund the maintenance of sidewalks, their sidewalks, is just beyond the pale to me. I mean, Article 31, which, which you know, would, would uh, authorize you to do that, I think the, the, the passage of Article 31 would weaken your negotiation pitch. It would not strengthen your negotiation. It would weaken it. Right now, you can say, look, you need to put together a deal we can sell to our voters. If we authorize in advance any deal, which is what 31 offers, then, then they're just negotiating with you and they're, saying, and they're going to put the pressure on you. You can't transfer it to the voters and say, look, we've got to sell it to our voters. I think that's a critically important negotiation <coughs> point. And that's why I say Article 31 is a dirty one, and we should vote no on that one. And I guess I'll leave it at that because I know you're time pressed. Okay. I agree Thank with you. most of what you said. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Announcements and community calendar. Mike? Yeah, I have uh, one great big thing here. It's called the Bank.